have seen the armature reactions in the case of DC machine. The armature reaction is the same in case of a synchronous machine, but with the effect of load, with the change in load, it changes. So it, sometimes it is cross magnetizing, sometimes it is magnetizing, and sometimes it is demagnetizing. We can have a look on the cases of different type effect of armature reaction on different type of load. <coughs> In the case of generator and, and uh, motor, they are different. <coughs> when it is unity power factor, when it is zero power factor, and red and zero power factor lead and I can have this table and this is a very important table when objective type of questions are concerned. Please remember this table as it is. In the case of generator and in the case of motor. In the case of generator and the motor at the unity power factor, it is always cross magnetizing. In the unity power factor, armature reaction is always cross magnetizing, whether it is working as a generator or whether it is working as a motor. <clears throat> In the case when this it is working as a Z zero power factor lagging. It is working as a zero power factor lagging. Here, it is demagnetizing in nature. In the case of generator and magnetizing in the case of motor. And in the case of zero power factor leading, in the case generator is concerned, it is magnetizing in nature and in the case of motor, it is demagnetizing in nature. This is a very important table uh, when uh, effect of armature reaction on different type of loads are concerned. When the load is of unity power factor again, it is cross magnetizing when it is generator and it is cross magnetizing in the case of motor 2. In the case of zero power factor lagging, it is demagnetizing in the case of generator and it is magnetizing in the case of motor. In the zero power factor leading, it is magnetizing in nature in the case of generator and demagnetizing in the case of motor. Please remember this for objective type of questions. Uh, we know what is called a voltage revolution. <coughs> In the transformer also in the electrical machine and, and transmission lines, we have already studied the phenomenon called voltage regulation. It is the change in the, the secondary full load current when it is thrown from no load to full load. And the voltage which is getting changed is called the voltage regulation. So, 
Normally, in synchronous machine, there are three uh, different methods by which uh, the voltage operation of the machine can be formed. First of all, it is first is called the EMF or your synchronous impedance method. <coughs> Second is normally called as Ampere method or your MMF method. Of course, the synchronous impedance method is also called as the EMF method. <coughs> the third method, which is normally known as the Poitier triangle method or the ZPF method. In the synchronous impedance method, uh, it's the open circuit and short circuit test. It's a simple test. Open circuit and short circuit test are found, and open circuit characteristics and short circuit characteristics are drawn. And from that, uh, we can find Z0 is equal to E0 upon ISC. And for that is very simple. And we know uh, from the EMF method, it is very easy. Uh, the very important point here is that the uh, open circuit characteristic and the short circuit characteristic, which we will be seeing uh, in a few uh, uh, moments. And the thing which is very important that uh, the advantages of the uh, your synchronous impedance method or your EMF methods are it is very easy to conduct because it's a no load test, first of all. <coughs> if you talk about this thing, First thing and the second thing, it is very uh, simple to conduct since it's a no load test. Uh, method is the same which, uh, which we have studied in uh, transformer and in your uh, induction machine and all that. The open circuit characteristics will be drawing. Uh, and uh, short circuit characteristics we will write and uh, from that we will be finding the voltage regulation. <coughs> the only disadvantage of this method is that this is a pessimistic method. This method, the EMF method is normally known as the pessimistic method. This is very important point. Please remember this thing. <clears throat> it's a pessimistic method because of the reason that the uh, value which we are getting uh, from EMF method is always higher than the actual value. So it is normally known as the pessimistic method. Please remember this thing. Coming to the Ampere method, uh, in this method it is just like your EMF method here, the phasor sum of EMF were actually uh, uh, added or uh, they were there uh, and uh, we were finding the voltage evolution from that. In, in the amplitude method or in the uh, uh, your MMM method, we are actually finding the MMM of the uh, phasors and from that we are finding the uh, voltage regulation. So it is normally called as the optimist, optimistic method.
because of the reason that if the value which we are getting here is uh, below the value, actual value, it is called optimistic method and the Z PF method is uh, the most accurate method This is the most accurate method by which anyone can find the voltage regulation of the synchronous machine. So please remember this thing also. This is the most accurate method. Would be a portrait triangle method, first of all. Second thing, the method, Ampleton method would be the best one. Third would be the synchronous impedance method. So in the increasing order or so the, sorry, in the decreasing order of their priorities, if you are supposed to find the voltage regulation, the decreasing order of the priorities of the who are finding the voltage regulation of synchronous machine would be like OTR or ZPF method, the second would be Ampleton method, and the third would be your uh, uh, EMF method, or which is also known as the synchronous impedance method. 